I guarantee that at some point during your clerkships, you will be asked to interpret an x-ray. In this video, I will be going over a systematic approach to reading chest x-rays, as well as high yield findings for common conditions that you may encounter on your clerkships. So reading a chest x-ray, you always want to use a systematic approach, and this really revolves around two mnemonics, the RIPE mnemonic and the ABCDE mnemonic. The RIPE mnemonic assesses the quality of the radiograph because you can't make an accurate diagnosis if you have a poor quality film. The ABCDE mnemonic is a sequential order for how you can read the radiograph each time so that you don't miss things. So assessing radiograph quality with the RIPE mnemonic. Before I actually even use the RIPE mnemonic, I ask one question, and that is, is this an AP or a PA film? And that is best described by this diagram. AP versus PA describes the orientation at which an x-ray was shot. So if you can look at this left side of the diagram, you can see that the x-ray first enters the body at the posterior side before exiting at the anterior side. So this is called a PA film. On the other hand, this x-ray is shot at the anterior part of the body first before hitting this posterior part, so this is an AP film. The main thing that you need to know is that PA films are almost always a better quality than the AP film. And this is for many reasons, but one of the big ones is that PA films depict the heart size more accurately than AP films. And this is illustrated pretty well on this diagram. When you're shooting a PA film, notice how close the heart is to the radiograph plate. This causes a very accurate picture to be uh, finally depicted on the plate. On the other hand, for the AP film, the heart is detected earlier and ends up getting magnified by the time it hits the radiograph plate. This can cause a falsely enlarged heart and can also obscure nearby structures within the lung fields. So this is a big problem. If PA films are so much better than AP films though, then why do we even get AP films in the first place? Well, a lot of times you have patients who are lying in bed and are not very mobile. For a PA film, oftentimes you need to be able to stand up in order to get this orientation. But if you're lying in a hospital bed, it's easier and more convenient to just get that AP film from a portable chest x-ray and shoot this AP film like this. So that's the reason you'll still see plenty of AP films during your rotations. Now going back to these two films, how do you tell if it's an AP film or a PA film? Well the easiest way is just to look at the top of the x-ray and usually it'll tell you if it's a PA film or it'll tell you something like mobile if it's an AP film. And here you can very easily appreciate how the heart appears much more enlarged on the AP film compared to the PA film. And this can be very important because, for example, if you had a pneumonia right here, it would be very, very easy to spot on the PA film. Whereas on the AP film, you could probably still spot it, but it might be obscured by this heart that's so enlarged. Now moving on to the ripe mnemonic, the first thing to check is rotation you need to check that the clavicles are equidistant from the sternum to make sure that the patient is facing the x-ray head on. So in this picture you can see that the clavicles are roughly equidistant and this is a good quality radiograph. In this patient however you can see that the clavicles are very skewed to one side of the body. This can cause artifacts such as this patient's widened mediastinum and because this is a poor quality radiograph, you don't know if this is actually a widened mediastinum or it's simply because the patient is so severely rotated. Next is inspiration. You want to check and make sure that the patient took a deep breath for their x-ray. And you can define this as being able to see 9 to 10 ribs on the x-ray. The reason it's important for the patient to take a deep breath is because if they don't take a good inspiration, their lung fields will be compressed, which can make things appear more congested and can hide their certain things. As well, it can compress the heart and cause an appearance of cardiomegaly when there isn't true cardiomegaly. So this left film you can see is a poor inspiration compared to this film on the right, which is a good inspiration. And the way that you can count the ribs is by first finding the first rib, which I always see right here. You can see this rib, it kind of curves back around and loops like that. So that's rib one. 
then you can start counting from there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now for this patient who took a better inspiration, you can see this first rib looping up around like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this was a good quality radiograph with a good inspiration from the patient. Next, you want to look at position, and this is kind of the position of the clavicles. This is assessing for if the radiograph was taken at an angle. So here you can see that the clavicles are very low, which means that the x-ray was shot kind of in a direction like this. Now what this does is it causes the lung fields to be compressed, which again makes it difficult to identify things. And here the clavicles are too high, which means that the radiograph was shot down from this angle. And again, that will cause the lungs to be compressed and can make it difficult to actually see what's going on. What you want to see is that the clavicles are in between the third and the fourth ribs on your x-ray. If you go back to this picture, you can see that the clavicle is nicely situated between the third and the fourth rib. And finally, you want to look at exposure. So this radiograph on the very right is a well-exposed film. The main thing you're looking for is that you should be able to see the vertebral column behind the heart. In this case, this is an underexposed film. You can't see the vertebral column behind the heart and everything has a white out appearance. So this is an underexposed film. On the other hand, this one you can clearly see the vertebral column behind the heart. However, the lung fields are black. They're almost burnt out. And this is an overexposed film. And it looks burnt out. So again, check for the exposure and make sure you can see the vertebral column, but the lung fields are not burnt out. These two are poor quality, and this is a good quality radiograph. Now that you've completed your assessment of the radiograph quality, you can move on to the next step, which is interpreting the chest x-ray with the ABCDE mnemonic. And this is a sequential order of going through things so you don't miss things when you're assessing a radiograph. A stands for airway. You want to check to make sure that the trachea is midline or if it's deviated, as in this patient right here, which is deviated because of this mediastinal mass right here. B is for bones. So if you just started looking directly at the lung fields, which a lot of people may tend to do, because that's often the reason we get these radiographs, you might miss other important findings, such as this clavicle fra fracture right here, or these rib fractures right here. So make sure that you always check the bones before you move on to everything else. C is for cardiac. One of the main things you assess here is the cardiothoracic ratio for cardiomegaly. And cardiomegaly is defined as a cardiothoracic ratio of greater than 50%. Another thing you can check is for mediastinal widening, which is concerning for something such as aortic dissection. A few anatomical things that you may be asked about. This area right here is called the aortic knob. This is actually the part of your aortic arch. And this part of the heart right here is your right atrium. D is for diaphragm. You want to look for any problems with the diaphragm. Now on the left is a normal diaphragm. And in the middle, we have free air under the diaphragm which is concerning for a perforated viscous or perforated bowel. And you can see this free air under both sides. On this film, we can see that there's blunting of the costophrenic angle, costo meaning your rib and phrenic meaning your diaphragm. And this is representative of a pleural effusion. So you should be able to see sharp costophrenic angles. And if you have something like this, that is diagnostic of a pleural fusion because you don't have that sharply defined costophrenic angle anymore. And E is for everything else. So now you can start looking at your lung fields and looking for any pathologies, such as this opacification right here, which would be concerning for a cancer. All right, thanks so much for watching this first video on how to read a chest x-ray. Next, I'll be going over some high yield findings and signs for common conditions you may encounter on the wards. Link to the next video will be in the description below, or you can use the link in the video here. Thanks.